first that you have to come up with a contract for supervision with the expectations defined. So you are outlining from the beginning what you are expecting of your trainees and they are agreeing to it. And then if there's any dispute or disagreement or misunderstanding later, then you can come back to that contract to help clarify and determine how to proceed. You also can't have a multiple relationship with your trainee. So um, we're very familiar with the multiple relationships rule, but um, they can pay you to provide supervision, um, but they can't be your employers. The supervisor is also expected to confirm that the trainee can begin hours. You want to not just go by somebody's word, but actually look at their transcript or, or proof that they have enrolled or completed their classes. Um, they also have to have started the behavior analytic components of their class. So a course that's going to count towards their um, course requirements, not just uh, any course, like if they just started grad school, but they're taking economics um, or, or some other courses that are not directly related to behavior analytic coursework. Also, if you start the supervision at the same time that they start their classes, they do have to pass that class. If they don't pass the class, then those hours can't count. You as the supervisor are responsible for supervising only within your competence. So only taking on trainees that you could support um, based upon your knowledge, experience and education around the areas that they are learning. If you have done all of your training in a school system, it might be outside of someone's scope of competence to supervise somebody who is accruing all of their hours in an in-home uh, ABA setting or vice versa. Um, not always. Uh, sometimes people have had a well-rounded experience of of their own application in those different environments. So they might be able to supervise across those environments, um, but being aware of what is within your competence also, supervisors are expected to only take the appropriate volume of supervisory activity for their workload. So you don't want to take on more trainees than you are capable of supervising. Supervisors are expected to model appropriate behavior with regards to ethics and professionalism, and supervisors are expected to provide feedback and reinforcement to trainees.